there! Welcome back to Corpse Factory! Where we just saw Jinpei get murdered. He is now dead. <laughs> he is not the living. You! The Masked Stranger looks like a, the villain from a B-rated slasher film. Perfect. He's covered from head to toe. Dark clothing. A zipped up jacket with extra long sleeve. A hood. A skirt. The cut on the fingers claw figures clothing clothes combined with his cheek gives me the impression that he may in fact be female. Okay. He is the world we've been searching for. The bloody corpse at her feet would suggest that so that mask. The mask. It's simple. Quite probably porcelain. It's reminiscent of something old character or maybe some film villain after all. Okay. A herald still hasn't moved. He's as still as a statue. He's he's vacant. Eyes impossible to discern. I am the mask. Are you the herald? First time the figure moved. It's a startling jerky movement, like a mannequin or puppet, being pulled by string. Her head cocks to the side as she seems to notice our presence for the first time. But an answer to Norco's question is not forthcoming. Well, I doubt the, um... Uh, culprit does it wants to get found out. I step up to the play. You really immortal? The Herald doesn't react to my voice, like she reacted to Noriko's. She has returned to the way stiff doll like statue. Pretty easily to prove if someone or Something is immortal, and I've always had a curious mind. I draw a knife from my pocket and lunge at it. I lunge at it. The man, the mannequin, blade embeds itself in its thin shoulder. If she doesn't punch its clinch, a trickle of blood pulls around the shining steel. Oh, Mr. Hart. Hojiro, why did you do that? I shrug and take a step towards the Herald. Poor Noriko tugs at my coat and holds me back. She takes my place and puts herself between me and the Herald. Tell us who you are. We deserve to know that much. Something in Noriko's words. The sound of her voice, or the tone of her plea, it ceases the Herald's move to move. Once more in acknowledgement. I. But the man is the motion this time is quick, fast, and calculated. Harold moves its sleeve and withdraw the knife from her shoulder. He allows the blade to drop down to the concrete concrete ground. 
with a dull ting. Or the knife hits the ground, the herald turns her back to, uh, to us pray, and breaks into a sprint. Shit. Not cut out to chase her. Don't bother. We won't catch up. The herald... The herald disappears into the darkness. If that part of the parking lot... We are left standing by the corpse of Shimpei Matsumoto. Well, we didn't see the killing, but at least the request was granted. He's right. Her gambit paid off. For now, Harold killed her own ally. He has proven her convictions are strong. They crouch down to examine Jempe's corpse, but it's hard to get a good look at in the darkness. Regardless, it's clear that the dog is dead. Should we leave the body? Mm. Going to send a text. Huh? Who are you messaging? See if I can pull a few strings. Wouldn't mind if the corpse ended up at my morgue. What are you planning? Nothing, really. Just want to prod and poke a bit. The Noriko is subsequent subsequent friend is a clear indication that she doesn't fully believe me. <sighs> Do what you want. I've gained as much from this as I had hoped. I let her trail off as I turned my attention to my phone. I swipe through my contacts and quickly compose a message. To a few people in particular. If all goes well, an investigation team will shortly arrive to examine the scene. This scene. I'll be gone by then, but if my contacts do their jobs correctly, they'll haul Jimpe back to the morgue. I picked my phone and her towards the blood-soaked knife. I launched at the Herald. I slide, it slides back into my pocket, and I signal to Noriko that we should depart. Goodbye, Junpei Matsumoto. She waves half-heartedly at the corpse and lets out a childlike giggle. Right? I uh, sent a few hours. Yeah, yeah. He sent a few hours of sleep. Didn't offer much in a way, in the way of refreshment. Refreshment. Have to be at the morgue again in an hour. Not that there's much to do there since the place is was robbed. Well, I've back and. <laughs> for like the next 8 to 12 hours. <laughs> Perhaps a few more cadavers will be will have arrived. Perhaps Junpei Matsumoto's corpse will be there. I should take this opportunity to take a breath. It's been a while since life slowed down like this. No requests coming through for a corpse girl. No bodies to haul around town with Tomoe. No cadavers to catalog at the morgue. Life should be good. I'm so loud. And Noriko may decide to discard me at any moment. Why 
does this make me want her more? Don't know. <laughs> I want to prove my worth. My value. Prove her to her that I'm worth keeping around. Don't know. The matter in the long run. After brewing myself a cup of coffee using the French press Tomori gifted me, I take a seat in my chair. Being alone in the darkness. What depressing. But it's only temporary. I want to be alone. I won't be alone forever. Soon, Nariko will sit here with me. We'll be together. Together in the darkness. I'll make her see my word. I'll make her love me the way I... The way that I love her. I'll make her fill the void that Shizuko left in my life. I'll make her treat my groaning pain in my inside. I'll make her save me from falling into despair, falling into old habits. Narco will save me from myself. Like Shizuko once did. I have a bad feeling about this. I take a sip of my coffee. Still a little hot. It's all gap in my mouth. Where my tooth once was. It hurts. But I'll be okay. Soon. Back at the morgue. And to hide a smile while plans unfold perfectly. The body was here waiting for me when I arrived. The morgue. And staring down at the pile of the corpse of Jimpei Matsumoto fills me with more satisfaction than I thought possible. Dog is dead, and my early morning encounter with his interior extractor wasn't some favor, fever dream, or wishful thinking. His body is riddled with stab wounds, deep, clean, piercing cut. Wow. Yeah, that's what happens when you, uh, the stab wound. But these injections... Uh, but these... Injuries... Injuries were not inflicted by a knife. In no frantic... Pathogist... Psychopath... Pathogist, but... The wounds are too thin and too deep. Each insertion is about the width of a chopstick. How he was killed by a chopstick. Oh, you never can tell. You never can rule out everything. I bet this guy has seen almost every kind of freaking death possible. Knowing his line of work. My gaze pins down his body, looking for me anything of interest. The rest of his form looks ordinary. Nothing to note. I'll zip up the bag for now and turn him to his immaculated gold chamber. I take him out once in a while. Have a laugh. As I raise the zipper covering his legs and groan, I'll shift his 
turns did the main repeat. Then I have cleansed. Cleansed. My hands have to really react from ever. The ice clutch of the bodies is fresh from its containment chamber. Meditation is a sensation of lightless. First, us. It was the sensation of touch that just me to startle. The sight of something out of the ordinary. Something I'd still missed my initial observation. Impaled finger. Five thick B digits each. And perfectly packed, dead, but otherwise healthy fingers. It was, uh, it was only days ago that I two two of his fingers, his thumb, and his pointer finger, using cheap metal cutlery. I can't forget the distinct feeling of plunging those implements through the flesh and bone, putting his fingers into a table. Corpse before me, there was no evidence for being injured in such a manner. Nobody can heal wounds like that without medical attention. Even then, stitches and scars will remain. Same Matsumoto's digits. 100% intact. And we're picture free. Picture free. Interesting. And from here, I think it's the time again to end the episode here. To figure out what has happened. So, I hope you guys have a great, wonderful time and a great day too. Well, I question what Junpei had to do. I'll see you guys next time.